All right, what's up, guys? We have Chelsea Zanova here, and so we're gonna ask him what makes him drift. For sure. We know you guys want to know more about Chelsea. Okay, so what makes you drift? What? Um, tell us what it is about the motorsport that keeps you driven. Yeah, so I, like I grew up like doing extreme sports, like riding BMX and skateboarding, and like I saw drifting for the first time, and I was like, man, that is literally what I do for fun all the time, but in a car. And when I was like 15, um, my mom like drove me to my first drift event in an S13. I went drifting, and immediately I was like, this is the most ignorant thing you can do in a car. And like that's what I'm about, doing 15? ignorant shit. Wait, where was this? In where? Florida. Ah, you're lucky. So, and then, you so before you were 16, you were like sneaking a car out kind yeah, of? Yeah, I had a fake ID to go <laughs> drifting. <laughs> That's like and the guys who ran the event, I don't know if you know like the Turtec guys, he's from BMWs uh -huh. back in the day. But anyway, Harry, the guy there was like, You've been like eighteen for like four years. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally like, Well I'm actually eighteen now, he's like, Motherfucker <laughs> Like You've been fun. sneaking that forever. I'm like, Yeah, whatever man, I gotta do what you gotta do to drift. Got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could have done I was like similar where like I would sneak my dad's truck out and like lived in the country in Washington. Yeah. And like go find gravel roads. It was like slide one around. tire fire but it like slide it. Yeah. And then finally when I was sixteen I was like, it's wet all the time there, so then I'd be sliding on the streets and yeah. then I'm like, Wait, there's a real sport like this? Yeah. yeah. Pretty so, much that's how it went. Like I was downloading videos on like LimeWire and Kazaa and stuff and watching like all the Japanese do drift. And I was like, man, we can do this. And like, I'd like drift one turn and drive straight, drift another turn. And then like, I went to my first event and I was like, man, like, I'm like all right at this, but everyone sucked so bad back then. But it's hard, it, at the beginning it was hard to like connect. Something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But yeah, we had like a little track that was a super small one. Like you could drift the bank in second gear. And like, I did that for a little while and then, you know, kind of moved forward from there, but yeah, like, that's how I got into it, and like definitely what makes me drift is like the continuation of that. Like, there's so much progression, it's like the same thing like new tricks, new this, new that, faster, more angle, setting the car up to drive with all these different people. So, there's always like so many different things you're doing, yeah, and like learning how to make it like push it, push it, push it, huh? Yeah, about similar to what I would say, like <laughs> yeah. the same exact thing. Um, of course. So, then the other question I was going to ask is well, so we all know that. I would say like, are you going to go pro? We already know you're pro and you've been doing it, but at what point did you decide to go pro? So in 2008, I got my first FD license and I didn't drive so I didn't really have any budget. And I was like, always wanting to go pro like since the beginning. So I was like, man, like I was pretty close to going pro and BMX stuff and like some other things we were doing. And I was like, this is like really what I want to do from the beginning. Even. like. I had a lot of fun doing it, but I'm really competitive, so I have a lot of fun competing with people. And uh, so I had run like some other pro am series, and you know, won like XDC back to back, and won like uh, some D1 events. I went to Japan for a little while and drove over there. And then I was kind of like, man, like I really want to drive FD. So I kept renewing my license every year, but just couldn't come up with the budget to drive. And then in 2012, BC came on board and was like, hey, like, we want you to drive. We know you've had a license for almost four years now. So that was it. I was like, let's do this. Was that the year that you were using the X5 as the... So that was 2011. In 2012, like my first year of FD, we ran the Toto Run. Oh, okay. But I did oh, tow so around with an X5 for a long time. That was before you were even pro then? Yeah. Oh, I remember watching like all the videos you'd make back then. Yeah. Like, Dang, one day I'm gonna get to be like happy. <laughs> yeah, like I I've, I've been watching you a lot and like you inspire me and just like I watch you know, like you watch who you wanna be like, you know? Hell yeah. And then you're like, Can he do this way? I'm gonna copy that or that, you know? Yeah, I waited forever to drive F D like it was like I wasn't gonna do it on like a like piss poor budget, like just killing myself. And oh, uh it was nice like <laughs> winning all the pro am things repetitively, like I would like have no spot or no crew, I would just show up in my car, do like three laps of practice, go watch some people drive, figure out their weaknesses and like their positives and then go out and just like stop it, like drive like a maniac for two days and then come home driving my X5 with my car behind on the open trailer. Oh, that's cool. But for sure you're fun to watch. Like, thanks man. Crazy fun to watch because it's like on the edge of crashing the whole time. Yeah. Or maybe you're in control but it looks like that way. So you're like, 
Oh no, he did it. <laughs> um, yeah, I finished my run and I'm like, whoo, I did it. I didn't rip the back of the car off, or I did rip the back of the car off, but we, we ended up all right. <laughs> That's like the best way to be, I think, for fans at least. Um, well, so you probably kind of answered this question, but what has it taken to get to this point in drifting? Have you developed new disciplines to make this happen? Yeah, I mean, I've been for half my life now doing this. So it's been crazy, like planning everything and being really analytical on like where I'm spending money and where I'm spending time and, and all that. So it's kind of like it comes natural thing right now to the point where like, be, even before I drove with RTR, it was like, I know I'm putting 60 hours a week in. So there's no like around that. Yeah. So like, you know, you're putting 60 hours a week in and maybe you finish early and then maybe you can have some time to chill for a little while, you know, like you get into that point where like, your car and what you do to make you know your career happen gets done first and then everything else kind of just kind of gets pushed like, off until it, like you have time for it or something yeah 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 you're Same like way. oh man like i've been at events where i'm just like we don't have time to do laundry we've been gone for two weeks you're like i just need to like go to walmart and buy cheap clothes because that, that takes Isn't less that time too, than, yeah. than going and doing laundry but yeah, I mean, it's just like all the little things. You just figure it out after a while. And now with the RTR thing, it's like I can focus on my driving a lot more and focus on like the actual building of my brand and everything uh, and not be just like killing myself, working on the cars all the time. But I still work it's on like, stuff. Well, since like I've been watching you, like maybe closer than you think, like I'm, <laughs> I'm like... It's creeping. I, no, like, well, <laughs> I see that you're like doing it by yourself and you're making it happen. I'm like, hey, if he did it and people like Matt and Mike did it, then I, I can try and I can do this. You know, yeah. Cause I don't have like funding coming from like anywhere. I'm just gotta make it happen. So like, it's weird to see you go to RTR cause I'm like, whoa, like now that's like the real deal. Like it's yeah. cool to watch. And then I didn't necessarily know that you had that much knowledge. Like every time you look at a car, you're like, oh, you might wanna maybe, but it's like, I wouldn't expect that cause yeah. you're not like, having a shop but like you built all your own stuff so you yeah. know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work yeah for 13 years i tried <laughs> everything and it was one of those things where i didn't have a ton of money and budget so it was like what can i do that takes a lot of time to make my car better so yeah, i was like that's good, all the way. suspension all the chassis stuff like it doesn't really cost a lot of money it's all time but then like when you're set up perfect your right. car drives better than if you had like a $200,000 car Right, or yeah, exactly. Like, the E46 I ran was, like, one of the fastest cars in FD on, like, one of the worst tires that and all of that. Crazy, huh? And it was just because, like, that chassis was in development for seven years, and I changed it every round. You know, like, I was like, let's try this, let's try that. You had it down. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty good. And then, you know, you look at the sport, and you go, like, well, we got to do a lead run and a follow run. So back then we were running like air suspension on the car so we could change the spring rate and ride height like on the fly. You know, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, it's illegal it now, but it, like, yeah. that was like one of the things I was like, well, if I do a lead run with the car the way I need to in a chase, like my car's undrivable because we were doing such stupid crap to make it hook up and drive. So I'd be able to loosen the car up a little bit in the lead position to get a good lead run. And then in the follow position, you know, they just want you to be, as, yeah, like in follow, they want you to be as close as possible all the time. Yeah. So that was one of those things where you could make it that way, but it was hard to drive, but you knew you had, what you had to do to win. So now Crazy. you got to adapt driving instead of that part. Well, we like grow the sport. Yeah, What's the sure. biggest challenge for you personally in drifting? Oh, there's a lot of challenges. The biggest one probably is still learning this Mustang, like, and how everything works for me. Like, I still just like, I'm only 75 or 80% in it. Like I drive it at 100%, oh, okay. but it's like, it, it can get away from you pretty easily. You know, like I, I built a car and a chassis and everything myself to fit what I've learned and what I've done. So it's all very much like, I drive within this box and I've always been within that box. But the Mustang is built by someone else don't really understand every aspect of it you know I keep learning and finding out new things that help me with everything but still it's like just different to drive you know it's like I ran with Chris Forsberg last weekend and I hit him like six times in, the, in one not run hard, no it sucks right. but I was not meaning to do that oh, that okay. was just like I'm like come on take it easy and I'm just like oh no oh no I'm hitting you again and again my mirrors are folded like oh no you know like 
So for me, it's like, I am not a driver that has a lot of patience. So my hardest struggle is like having patience while driving a car, which you would think is never even a thing in drifting, but it does become a thing like when everything's not exactly 100%, you know? You just yeah, so that would be cool to see you like get to the level of that car if you're not all the way there yet. Yeah. yeah. It's already kind of crazy watching you drive it. I think you'll see in the future like a little bit more refined driving uh, on my end. Okay. Still is wild. Hopefully but like, it still is wild. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if I'm not having fun out there, it doesn't look like I'm trying to kill myself and why are we there, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> but yeah, I think you'll see like maybe only one back half of the car blown off each weekend and hopefully that's in like top four and charging hard. That's my goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna take me time though. Yeah, for sure. Especially like Long Beach, like we were we were just saying like we got like what, eight or nine laps before main day. Not even. I think I got ten. Yeah. But I got to the media days. So right, I yeah, I did too. Yeah. So that's what I mean. So like we at least got that, but it's like Still, if you, if you went back today and drove again, you'd be way better. Yeah, I know. But that's the sport. They're like, hey, right. here, like, we're going to change the rules a little bit. Okay, 10 laps, go. Now do great on your call. Like, yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> I can do this. Yeah, I get where they're going with the sport, though. It's it fun to sense. watch, though, so that's what they need. Yeah, for um, sure. Okay, what, like, what's the first, like, most fun memory that comes to mind, when, like, at the track or within drifting that, like, What's the one best memory that you had? One best the memory. Uh, well, winning Long Beach was pretty cool in 2016. That was my favorite one. That was, <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous because we did not have an easy way to get there. And our car was just ridiculous that day. And you were just like, Lad! Lad! Yeah. There was like no stopping us. I remember like my crew guy getting on the radio, like not even my spotter at the time, being like, dude, just like, do you like turn your radio off like you're just gonna annihilate this is the day right here and it ended up working that way and it was it was wild there was definitely some ignorant driving that day before like just like thinking back before that I always would like watch you like I've been saying but then I'm like when is he gonna get his break and right. then it happened then or when am I gonna like, not have you're... something break <laughs> I know well that's what I mean like when are you gonna get your chance cause like you're trying so hard but then you didn't have the money or whatever like in the like the team of people yeah and then you would have some motor issues like a couple times every year huh and then, like every time and then <laughs> I'm like getting one to the point where I'm like like Chelsea, come on! Like you're a good, but like I didn't talk to you. I'm just observing, you know. Right. And then you got it, and I remember like your suit is kind of like a used one from the year before. And everything. <laughs> Two years before. But you like yeah. made it all come together, and you're like, look, everyone, I can drive really good. Here it is. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, that, we're like, good. Other people watching you hope or like. Yeah. That, that's like the cool part. For sure. That happen. Yeah, I mean that whole car and everything was built like me and one other person that was it like and then that person even you made then, it better that you remember like you had like changed your intake and all this stuff was like yeah we made changes like everything all was, like, the time perfect, so. yeah everything was perfect besides the cam choice the cams were blowing motors up uh, as crazy as that sounds but yeah we went through seven motors and no eight of eight motors in uh eight events so oh my god two in one event and that one event we didn't want to give up oh yeah, yeah. It was close. If I didn't, I mean, truth be told, if I didn't get the deal with Vaughn and work that out to make it happen, I probably would have taken a year off. See, that's like how stressful for the drifting. Yeah, well, I would have just because I was like killing myself. I was like 80 hour weeks. Like I built my own motors, assembled everything myself. Even at the end, I was doing all the machine work because the guy at the, at the machine shop was like, Dude, just use my stuff. You got it. You've seen this done. Tired of doing this. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't have time, but I know you can get it done. And like, he would just be like, come here at four thirty in the morning and get it done before everyone else gets here. That's crazy. And then That's the like, chassis stuff and swapping the motors and like, I had someone helping me, but it was just the two of us, just like nonstop every day for a whole year chasing it. And then I borrowed funny. a car and crashed the borrowed car and LS swapped my car for. Irwindale oh, and blew that up like second lap oh, on track. It was like the worst ever. Because you borrowed 
You borrowed Van Cleef's one time and Odie's one time. Yeah, and I borrowed that green S13 in Texas in 2016 too. Oh my god. Because well, my motor swap didn't work out in time. But you made it all the way through all that. I've it, never missed an event. That's cool. Yeah, I won't miss an event no matter what. Even if I gotta show up in some bullshit, I'll drive it. <laughs> That's that's why the fans like you. Thanks. Um, last question. What makes you rad? What makes me rad? Well, that sounds like a conceited answer, no matter what I say. Just say it. They <laughs> they want to hear it. <laughs> what makes me rad? Well, I pretty much just drive like a maniac all the time, and I feel like if you're gonna do something, do it right and do it hard, and that's what it's about. So that's I mean, why everyone likes to watch you. Yeah, for that. sure, man. It's all. I mean, really, like if we were here doing this and we weren't rad, it would just be boring. Yeah. And then the sport would not be cool. You and Mad Mike and Matt Field inspire me to just like do. I'm like, drive like a maniac. Yeah, as hard as I can <laughs> drive and then harness it back from the wall. Sometimes I'm gonna total my car, but yep. I'll fix it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean that's what it's about. Like, like immediately, like when I go to the track, first lap out, I'm like. Feel the car, make sure everything's working. Second lap, find every wall. And then third lap, hopefully put it together, put a good qualifying lap down. And then from there, I refine each spot with my spotter to make it perfect. So, yeah, it's all about just driving like a maniac. I might have to ask you for help sometimes. Be like, hey, pointers? Yeah, for sure, man. Okay. Whatever you need, man. Thanks, man. Well, that's the interview with Chelsea. Hope you guys liked it. Now you get to know a little bit more about him. Uh, if you didn't know, <laughs> thanks for doing this, Chelsea. Yeah, man, for sure. All right, All right guys. guys. See you later. So if you guys didn't have the chance to come out to Long Beach or you're not local to California, don't forget we still have some of these posters signed by me, full-size ones, perfect to hang in on your wall or in a frame at your house or at the office. And then check this shirt out. Go on our website, check out our four new styles of shirts. This is one of them. Really nice cotton, go check it out.